Hello, everybody. Today we're going to be reading through 1 Peter chapter 5. That's right. 1 Peter is coming to a close, and we'll be back next week with the book of 2 Peter. Uh, but for now, uh, yeah, I invite you to grab your Bibles, read along with me, and as you're doing that, going to BibleGateway.com, loading up your Bible app, uh, grabbing your physical Bible to read along with me. I'm going to do a quick recap of uh, what we've been reading through thus far. Um, so First Peter is written to a people uh, in a foreign land that are getting <laughs> oppressed by uh, the Roman people still. Um, and it's addressed to these people. This is kind of their mindset. There's a lot of not great things going on. And it's being written as a bit of encouragement for them. Uh, and the first chapter, the big takeaway from that for me was this idea of the forever mindset. That we are temporary residents here on this earth, but we will be permanent residents in heaven with God. Um, and then uh, the second chapter um, was uh, an interesting one as it dealt with um, living stones, uh, kind of God using us uh, as part of his kingdom there, uh, respecting authority, and uh, even, um, you know, a little bit about slaves. It was tough, but um, if there was one thing that kind of came from there, the kind of the big standout from that, it would be how Christ modeled the way for us how when he was slandered he didn't seek revenge he didn't hold it against him he didn't seek that revenge he did not retaliate when he was insulted is actually what the verse 23 said there um and that uh, he trusted all of that stuff into god's hands so many times we get cut off we do this we do that and um we just get angry and we want vengeance to be in our own hands but God um, is a perfect judge and we can trust him and Jesus did uh, he didn't deceive anyone he didn't do any of that and we need to model that way and when we model that way you know um, we're doing a good job of representing Christ to those around us being those living stones uh, in God's house that he's been building the next part was in chapter three, um, uh, encouragement for wives, husbands, and all Christians. And the thing that pretty much comes there is, especially if you're in a married relationship, respect the other person. Um, you know, don't go talking behind their back, uh, but kind of have this mutual submission to each other. You're both in this together and one per if just one person's getting their right way the whole time um then the other person is slowly uh well they're they're not uh compromises need to happen um and to be willing to um put some of your own desires aside for the other person's benefit um yeah that mutual submission um and then uh fourth um chapter uh i would say kind of sum it up with um it's good to suffer when for being a christian as long as you're following christ um and you're not using your faith to lie manipulate uh steal and hurt others but if you're choosing to forgive someone and you're getting mocked for it, that's a good thing. Um, and choosing to suffer well is uh, what God calls us to do. But when we seek vengeance and we lie and manipulate um, in the name of God, that's not what God wants. Um, and uh yeah uh way back when uh, i it was about 10 years ago i think when i first heard it 
But the call of being a Christian is a call to suffer well. And there's a lot of suffering in today's world, whether it's, um, you know, the chaos on the news, uh, it's the inconveniences of this, that, or the other, but the call of a Christian is to suffer well. And Christ identifies with us in our suffering. Um, so yeah, and that brings us to chapter five. Um, and advice for elders and young men, and Peter's final greeting. So, without further ado, let's jump into 1 Peter chapter 5. <clears throat> so, I have this right underneath the camera, and I don't know how well it worked last time, uh, but uh, we'll see if it works this time. Uh, chapter 5. And now, a word to you who are elders in the churches. I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ. And I too will share in his glory when he is revealed to the whole world as a fellow elder. I appeal to you, care for the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to you uh, to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of never ending glory and honor. In the same way, you who are young must accept the authority of the elders, and all you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to uh, one another. For God oppresses the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the same and at the right time, He will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you have suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you. And he will place you on a firm, foundation all power to him forever amen peter's final greeting verse 12 i've written and sent this short letter to you um, with the help of silas whom i commend uh, to you as a faithful brother my purpose in writing this uh, is to encourage you and assure you that what you are experiencing is a truly a part of God's grace for you. Stand firm in his grace. Your sister church here in Babylon, or Rome, uh, sends you greetings. And so does uh, my son Mark. Greet each other with a kiss of love. Peace be with you all. Uh, peace uh, be with all of you who are in. Christ. May God add a blessing to the reading of all of the book of 1 Peter. Um, yeah, so there's, even though this is a short one, there was a couple things that um, I think were very, very interesting. Um, so, uh, when it calls for the elders uh, to care for the flock, um, it encourages watch over it willingly, not grudgingly. 
um, for for uh, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. So, um, looking after people, uh, especially those that you're in community with, that you're serving with in, um, uh, like that you're going to church with, that you're, you're seeing at work, that you're doing this, that you're doing life with, look after each other. Don't do it grudgingly because of some sort of reward that you'll get out at the end of it, but do it, uh, in service to God. Uh, hey, Hunter, sorry uh, that I miss you a little bit uh, later on when you post that. It was only eight minutes ago, but um, that was almost at the very beginning. So, hey, Hunter, sorry. Um, uh, so, yeah, don't lord it over people either. Like, don't be like, hey, look at how I am. Look at where I am in my success. Uh, don't do that. Do it out of service for others. Because it lifts them up. And by serving them, you're serving God. Um, I think that's a, a cool thing. Um, then it also encourages uh, young uh, men to do it as well. So you have the older generation teaching the younger generation how to love, how to serve, how to guide, how to direct. Um, and how to care for one another. So many times, uh, you know, I thought being a guy meant being macho, being angry, being this, being that, being able to do all these sorts of things. And I look at my spiritual father and I look at, at Christ and it's about how do you stand firm in the face of adversity to care for others, to love others, to be willing to admit that you also need help and help isn't a bad thing. So lean on one another, help one another, be able to accept help and to give help. But accepting help is a big thing that is frowned upon so many times for some reason, but it's not a bad thing. You need that community to get through. Um, yeah. Uh, and then that's part of like humbling ourselves, right? I'm not perfect. I fall short. I need those other people to help me out. Um, and stay alert, watch out, uh, for the great enemy, the devil, he prowls like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. If you've ever seen, um, uh, a thing where like a lion is stalking its prey, like I used to have a shirt, uh, that said, um, Satan's a nerd. It's because he studies you, he watches you and he waits for you to slip up because he wants to cause that wedge. He wants to distract you from God. I often uh, think of God, um, he's as distractful as a fly, but it's dangerous as a lion. His tactics are like a fly constantly distracting you, getting you to look at all the wrong things, care about all the wrong things, ask the wrong questions. So he's as annoying as a fly, but as dangerous as a lion. Because when you start looking down these things, you might get the teeth into you and then you're drawn in to sin, drawn into sin. And you see all the wrong things, you ask all the wrong questions, and a wedge gets divided between you and others and you and God. As, as annoying as a fly, as dangerous as a lion. That's one of my sayings. Uh, that's a Jeremyism. Uh, one of the other things I thought was really cool is this talks about how the kingdom of God is all around the world. The kingdom of God does not look like what it looks like here in Orangeville. It doesn't look like what it looks like here in Canada, in North America. Uh, especially, like, North America is often like, hey, that's what the church is supposed to look like. No, the church is this global thing. The average Christian is a, is a mother living in a hut in the middle of a desert. That's the average Christian. If you took all the Christians that are following Jesus right now, the average would not be some um, wealthy white business guy in the States. It'd actually be a single mother, um, most likely a black mother uh, in a hut in the middle of the desert. 
that's what our average is. We have a tendency to, to lift up all this other stuff. So it's that reminder that, you know, just what we see isn't it all because we are all over the world. And I think that's actually really encouraging as well. Because so many times we can feel alone. But, um, you know, the struggles in, in North America are one, but they might be in a different way somewhere else. But we're all going through this together. We're all fighting uh, to stay firm in our belief as the enemy is attacking us in ways where we may be weak. On that note, let us pray. AJC, awesome Jesus Christ, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. Thank you for, for humbling us. Lord, help us to do what is right. Help us to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, no matter what uh, is on the other side. Lord, thank you for all the ways that you love us, you guide us, you bless us, you direct us. Help us to stay firm, caring for one another, caring for you, uh, giving help, accepting help. Lord, let us not grow weary in doing good, but Lord, help us to find rest and to rest well. Thank you so much, Lord. You are awesome. Um, we lift up everything that we read throughout this book. And for those that are in the midst of suffering um, and struggle, Lord, may something that we read this week give hope, give strength. Even if they're watching it 10 years from now and they just come across this Bible verse, this, this Bible study, um, use it, Lord. Use your words in this video to impact not only um, you know our lives today, but uh, tomorrow as well. And give us the eyes to see the future, that we have that forever mindset, that we know that this life is temporary and we can give all of it, all of our pain, our hurt, and our joys to you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, so that's it for today. I'll see you guys um, in a couple days with uh, the book of Second Peter. Have a great day. God bless.